Every week, thousands of people pass through the doors of the Rhode Island Philharmonic's music school in East Providence. From a small jazz combo class to the youth wind ensemble to private lessons One, two, ready, go. on a variety of instruments. This is a place where education and performance hold equal importance and a third of the 1,500 students in the music school receive some level of financial aid. The overriding message from the top down, there is music for everyone. What we know is that when you make high quality music education available to kids and families, they take you up on it, right? Regardless of what zip code they live in, the color of their skin, you know, cultural background, uh, Music is an innately human thing to do. We're all born with it inside of us. Everybody wants it as a part of their lives. David Beauchene is the executive director of the Rhode Island Philharmonic Orchestra and Music School. We want to really look at where are people that we're still not reaching and why and what do we need to do to make ourselves even more accessible to them. The Music School was created in 1988 but didn't have a permanent home until a decade ago, when the nonprofit totally gutted and renovated the former Meeting Street School. The building was transformed into the Carter Center for Music Education and Performance. 31,000 square feet of rehearsal space, private lesson rooms, and an area for parents to hang out during practice time. Beauchene came to Rhode Island from Atlanta in 2006 to help complete the merger of the Philharmonic Orchestra and Music School under one roof. He says the building's soundproof rooms were designed to maximize space. Being in borrowed space doesn't work for a music school because our rooms have to have the right acoustics so that you can give a music lesson in one room and not hear the music lesson that's happening in the room next to you. Otherwise, you know, you need to put about three empty rooms between you and the next room, and then you need a, you know, a 90,000 square foot building instead of a 30,000 square foot building. In addition to its own programming, the music school is home to nearly a dozen partner organizations. What this organization now does for the community uh, relative to creating access to high quality music education and great performances um, because of the merger is far greater than it ever was when the music school was a separate entity and the orchestra was a separate entity. The whole really has become greater than the sum of its parts. One, two, three, and... <laughs> Musicians hail from all over southern New England, and some have been coming here for more than a decade. May T. Meyer, a high school junior from Providence, started playing French horn in the fifth grade, working her way up to a spot in the Youth Symphony Orchestra. When we're all playing together and kind of like you're in the middle of all the music and everyone playing, and um, sometimes I just get like chills down my spine when we play it really well. Um, and it's just, it's a really great feeling. and It's great being able to work together and produce this like, amazing music. Emma Smith, who sits a row over from May, travels 45 minutes from Rentham, Mass. She began playing cello eight years ago and has watched the music school grow as a member of the Youth Symphony. It's really cool to look back and see where you once were, like to see how much bigger the program is now. Because back when I was in it, it was just me and a few other kids and now it's so much bigger. And it's cool to see that they're gonna have so much of a greater experience now that the program is so much bigger. I remember the first time I walked here, I was like, what is this? Is this like a little oasis in the middle of like, you know, Rhode Island? Piero Guimaraes, a native of Brazil, who is the music school's percussion coordinator, sees the effect music is having on students from the teacher's perspective. The impact on students, it's huge. I think nowadays we're going through a lot of like trouble with students being engaged with each other, like because of technology, you know, I, I believe that technology has like his, its advantages, but also like we're so dis like disengaged 
nowadays, and I think the opportunity for them to like come in a room and just play. All the technology is gone. They finally, they have to engage like within themselves. One, two, ready, play. The school's reach goes far beyond its own walls. For the past three years, third, fourth, and fifth graders have gathered in a classroom at the Agnes Little Elementary School in Pawtucket, three days a week to play violin or viola. The program, one of many across the state run by the music school, is part of Victoria's Dream Project, named for Victoria Alvedi, who was killed in an automobile crash eight years ago at age 22. Her family set up a foundation to honor Victoria's desire to promote music programs in schools at a time when some school systems have been cutting back on music and art programs. It was a natural fit for the music school. Three dozen participants in the after-school program receive an instrument at no cost, beginning or intermediate instruction based on their skill level and help with their homework. I spend a lot of time arranging songs um, and extra parts to the songs that will fit where certain students are and challenge other students to keep them from being bored and things like that. Abby Magoon is a product of the music school where she began taking lessons at age 15 with the help of financial aid. Three and after graduating from the Boston Conservatory of Music, Magoon returned to the place where she learned to play, now as a violin and viola instructor. Three years ago, she became the lead teacher for the program at Agnes Little. And music has to do with all of life. There's things about, you know, basic respect, things about teamwork, um, things about applying yourself, uh, communicating with friends, communicating with teachers, um, all sorts of things. But for our goal is just to know that when they leave the program, they can look back and know that those two or three teachers valued them as a person and were willing to invest in them. Beauchene said everyone who goes through the program at Agnes Little is invited to be a student at the music school for free and given a chance to audition for the youth orchestra. Every kid who's auditioned from that, has, that program has gotten in and not just gotten in, but our, our faculty have been really pleased at how well prepared they are. What we're trying to do through these programs is not just pay lip service to the idea that these kids don't have music education, so we're gonna give them a little bit. We're trying to give them music education at the same level of quality, or in some cases even higher than their peers in affluent zip codes might be getting because they haven't had access to it for as long, uh, and so we need to catch them up. On Saturday mornings, the Youth Repertory Orchestra plays in one rehearsal room, while the Youth Symphony, directed by Alexi Chabaline, rehearses across the hall. Chabaline, who came to the United States from Russia in the mid-90s, joined the music school in 2001 and oversees five different orchestras. It's a very big commitment because it's not only rehearsal time. They have to practice their parts they have to be ready for the rehearsal. Chabaline, who watched arts and music programs cut during the recession a decade ago, says having music in the public schools is critical. We cannot exist without uh, regular schools, without public schools programs. And if those programs are going to be cut, uh, we were not going to have enough um, students. Uh, we have private uh, students, obviously, but uh, the major uh, concern is elementary and middle school string programs. While some students here will go on to make music a profession, most are here to enjoy playing and realize the benefits learning an instrument offers. Music has definitely helped like my math because there's a lot of math in music. I struggled with math for a really long time and once I got to fractions I realized, oh wait, this is just music. The thing that meant so much for me, even before they had this building, even before many of the programs were, you know, part of it, because it was a smaller community then, the thing that meant so much for me was people were investing in me when I was here as a student. People were 
almost always going above what they had to in order to invest in me and see me grow in my instrument and to be a part of my growth, even administrators, not just teachers. When we play together, it's not only your individual effort, it's how to blend with another people, how to match with the sound, and it's kind of great experience for kids to, to have this kind of opportunity to make a beautiful harmony. Music is inside every human being. When you give kids the opportunity to tap into that, and you tell them that theirs is unique and different, and you do that in, uh, in a music instruction environment like the one we have, where often they're working one-on-one -on -one with an adult who's telling them, this is something that's in you, I believe in you, and I know that you're capable of achieving something remarkable, if you want to. Um, that's a powerful message to send to a kid. In East Providence, Jim Hummel for the Rhode Island Spotlight.